So this demonstration will be for the construction of the cape. Um, when you turn in your two capes, you wanna make sure that you put them on one of these white hangers. Um, you're turning in two capes per group. Uh, the instructions are here. Please make sure that your cape is here. It's completely finished. You need to have a clear sheet protector with the photo of your cape on a dog. Make sure that all your group members' names are on the back of the picture that you turn in. I also do need a write-up, so an artist statement of your cape, and that is something that I'll email out, um, just the format um, and how I'll need that sent out. If, uh, when you come in to get your pattern, so the patterns, and I have sizes small, medium, and large, the difference between, so you may see two small patterns. Um, some of them have a curved uh, under the neck piece for the dog, and some have a square one that looks like this. So just take a look at the pattern. They'll be hanging on a pattern hook on this rack. When you're finished, please make sure that you don't leave a footprint in the sewing lab. So everything that you used or borrowed, make sure it gets put back in its right place. Um, make sure countertops are clean, tables are clean, um, and make sure that these patterns, because your classmates are using them, um, are put back uh, in its rightful place and the next person can grab it. Um, the instructions for the patterns are written on the actual pattern. So you can see here, it tells you how many to cut. Um, and this is what I'll demonstrate. So this is a small dog coat that I'm gonna sew up for the demonstration. Um, so I'm cutting one for the shell. So that's the outside or the main fabric. Um, and then I'm cutting one for the lining. So that's the finishing to hide the seam allowance and everything. And then we're stitching this at a half inch seam allowance, which I'll talk about when we get to the sewing machine. Um, and then this tells you what the finish measurements are so that when you're measuring your dog, you can estimate if this is the right size or if we do need to adjust it a little bit. So the finish length should be about 10 inches and the width here should be about 10 and a quarter inches once we have it sewn. Okay, so I have my oak tag piece, which is the pattern piece, on a piece of newsprint to trace this out. Um, and I do have little notches. These are called notches. So there's little divots in the pattern um, just to give me some uh, notches to be able to put this back together and placement of the straps, okay, and to find the center of the garment to match both pieces up. So what I'm gonna do is go around with my pencil, making sure that my pencil lead is rubbing up against the oak tag and then just do a clean trace. Try not to trace like this because you tend to go under the oak tag pattern piece. You may need to just have something weighing it down. So I have my notcher and my pins just weighing this down. Make sure that you go inside of each of those notches. Uh, so that you'll know exactly where to place your straps later. Okay, so then I want to just pick this up um, and take a look at it. So I do want you to put a grain line on this. So you're just going to connect the top and bottom notch here just by making a line. Okay, so that's our grain line or the center. Um, and then I'm just going to write it on here in case you need to use this again, small dog coat. Um, and then I like to put my name or my initials on the pattern just in case I cut it out or I lose it or something, somebody finds it, I don't have to do the tracing again. So I'm going to go ahead and with paper scissors, I'm going to just carefully cut this out. Now remember, we do need seam allowance in here and it's already incorporated in the pattern. So I can cut right on my actual cutting line for the pattern. So I'm going to carefully cut, making sure I don't leave any space outside of the pattern and I'm not cutting inside of my pencil line. So right on the line, I'm going to cut carefully and try to cut on the table. A 
Okay, once your pattern is cut out and labeled, please make sure that you're recycling or reusing any excess paper. Once you're finished with the pattern that's on oak tag, please make sure that you put it back on the pattern hook and hang it back on the rolling rack. Okay, so next I'm ready to go ahead and lay out my fabric. And just for this demonstration, I'm gonna just use a piece of denim that I have. Um, what you'll need to do is open up the denim if you're using the upcycled denim um, and need a large piece for the shell of the fabric. So my selvage edge or my finished edge is here. And I do wanna make sure I'm cutting, especially because this has a um, sort of distressed print on it along with the grain of the fabric. So what I'm gonna do here is just kind of measure for grain. And we mark that center grain line, which is the straight grain of the fabric. And what I'm gonna have to do is measure. So I'm gonna take my clear ruler and I'm gonna measure from that center line over to the selvage edge. I'm gonna slide it over just a little bit. And right now I'm measuring right at my selvage edge. That's eight inches. So if it's eight inches here, I then wanna go just to the bottom of this and make sure that's eight inches, which is a little bit off. So what I'm gonna do is just pivot this so that the distance between my grain line and my selvage edge here and my grain line and my selvage edge here are the same distance. So that means it's not slanted on the fabric, okay? So that's measuring for grain and you can see how thin this paper is, so just be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of weigh this down until I can get ready to pin it. So I'm gonna start taking my pins and I'm gonna pin my corners diagonally, making sure that my pins do not extend out past the edge of my pattern line. And I'm gonna space these out about an inch and a half. I just want to put enough pins in here so if my scissors go underneath, um, I'll still get a proper cut and it will be accurate. Okay, so after everything is pinned um, and just note that everything is perpendicular to the edge of the pattern piece, I can either cut with my fabric shears or my rotary cutter. Make sure if you're using a rotary cutter, I am on a recovery mat. Um, so that I don't scar any table surfaces. Um, if you're using the scissors, make sure you're cutting flat on the table. You wanna cut so that you can see where the blade is gonna come down so you're not cutting your pattern and you're not leaving extra fabric outside of the pattern. Make sure your scissors are sharp. If you need to sharpen them, um, you can just use a piece of aluminum foil to cut through your scissors and that should sharpen them. Um, and just try to get a nice accurate cut. If you are using the rotary cutter, um, just make sure you always put the safety back on when you stop using it. Um, again, you wanna make sure that you are, you can see where the blade is gonna go down so you get a nice accurate cut. You're gonna press down and make sure your hand is beside the blade and not in front of it. This, I'm probably getting a more accurate cut with my scissors. And you just want to make sure that your pattern piece is the same exact size as, or your fabric piece is the same exact size as your pattern piece. We will cut another one of these for the lining. So we'll cut this one first.
Okay, once you have this cut, um, what I'd like for you to do is either snip or mark your notches. So I have two notches here for the strap placement. If you snip, please make sure you only do just the very tiny edge of the fabric. If you go and cut deeper than the half inch, you'll actually have a hole at the side of your um, garment. So I'm gonna cut just the tiny edge, not even as long as the notches. And then I'm going to cut one at the top where it's notched and then at the bottom. Okay, if you don't feel comfortable snipping, you can use the chalk or you can use your pencil and just mark on the opposite side, so on the wrong side of the fabric. Okay, just so you'll be able to put that together with the lining uh, properly when we sew the lining. So now I'm going to go ahead and take these pins out. I'm going to lay out my lining and repeat this whole step. Okay, so if you purchase some fabric, so I did purchase this lining. Um, just remember that when your fabric is cut, the right or the good side or the front of the fabric is always facing out. So try not to refold it because you want your pattern um, to be face up on the right side of the, of the fabric, okay? Um, and I'm just gonna cut one layer, but I know that this is the right side of the fabric, so I can go ahead and kind of move that out of the way and still make sure that I'm on the right side of the fabric. If you refold it, sometimes it's hard to tell which is the right or the wrong or the front and back of the fabric. Okay, so I just removed the pins from um, this portion of the cape and I'm gonna go ahead and I can clearly tell what my right and wrong side is, but I can mark it again with chalk just so I know this is my wrong side of my fabric here. I put a little mark on the back and I'm going to sit that to the side. So now I'm going to go in and measure again for my grain line, for my lining. So and it doesn't matter what the measurement is, it just matters that it's parallel. So that line on the pattern needs to be parallel with the selvage edge. So right now it's lined up with eight here. And it's a tiny bit crooked. Lined up with eight here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put something heavy on it until I can pin it. And because my lining is very lightweight um, and this, Usually the lighter fabrics are a little bit harder to cut with scissors. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this with my rotary cutter. <clears throat> okay, so I have my entire cape pinned down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just cut around it. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed corner here, here. Okay, and so now I am going to cut my lining carefully. So this is uh, the lining cut out. And again, I wanna go in and notch. So you can either just clip just the very edge of where you wanna notch, or you can go in with pencil and notch. It's up to you. I think I'm gonna just clip it. Please just make sure you don't go too deep with the notching. So now I have 
um, if I go ahead and take these pins out. my lining and I'm going to just mark again on the wrong side of my lining just a little x so I know it looks the right side and I have my shell so with these two at this point anything that you want to put on the shell that um, needs to be done before we actually sew it go ahead and do it, but be mindful if you put any embellishments or anything, um, you need to make sure that you don't come in this half inch perimeter around the cape um, because then you'll be sewing over it with the machine. Um, so anything like um, if you're gonna insert something in the seam. So I may try to do another version of this cape if I have time um, and record it that has um, a ruffle inserted in the seam. So if you insert anything in the seam like that, um, or even any kind of strap, then that needs to be caught in the seam facing toward the inside of the garment. Um, let's say I wanted to put some of these studs um, and they're going to be hammered and they have prongs in the back. So I really don't want that to show through my garment once it's sewn because this is a really light lining. So what I would do is go ahead and attach um, these studs on here uh, so that everything will be hidden on the back of this. And then by the time I sew it and flip it out, um, the lining will hopefully hide it. Now you can also line, you can self line your dog cape. So that means I could have cut two layers of this and just use one for the shell and one for the lining. So that's also an option. Um, I just didn't want mine to be too thick so I chose a different line. Okay, now for the straps, you have a couple different different options. I will show you how to make, um, how to use a pattern piece to make a strap that's your same fabric for your shell so it doesn't stand out. Um, another thing that you can do is use bias tape or some sort of trim. Um, so this is just bias tape that I can just stitch close so it is open because it's a double fold bias tape. I can just stitch this side close and I can actually insert this inside wherever my strap notch is. Um, and then when I go to put this together, so I'd end up stitching the two right sides together. And then so once this is stitched, my strap would be you know inside and caught in my seam. Um, and this is just if you don't want to cut or you don't mind it looking different, you can just buy the bias tape. Um, the bias tape can also be used. So let's say I go ahead and um, I'm finishing up my cape. If I put the right sides on the outside, instead of flipping this or so leaving an opening where I'm going to flip it, I can actually use the bias tape as a finish. So this would be sort of stitched around. And I do have a YouTube demo on how to finish it this way. So this would actually hide my seam allowance here. And the bias tape is cut on the bias so it can go clean around curves. Um, and so this would kind of be my finish on my dog cape. Okay, so that's also an option. Um, so right now I'm going to just show you how to do a strap um, in case you want to have your straps be the same fabric as your cape. Okay, so this next pattern piece that will also be with the capes uh, or for the strap. So you're going to cut two in the fabric, two in the lining. I think I want mine to be the same, um, just the denim. So that means I'll just cut four. Um, and with this, you can either Velcro it on um, or you can do a snap. Again, if you use the bias tape, um, you can just tie it underneath. Um, so I'm just going to put on here that this is a strap. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out with my paper scissors. I have my strap here and this I'm going to cut out of the denim. Now for this strap, if it's not on grain, it's not such a big deal, but I am going to try to fold my fabric and put this on grain. So I'm going to put my two salvage edges together again with the right or the front side of the fa fabric facing out, wrong side on the inside. And I think I can get another cape out of there. So I'm gonna use this in. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to save my fabric here. So where I cut this, I'm gonna just fold this over. So then I can just put my strap down twice and cut it. Okay, so I'm gonna pin this down. And it's gonna go through both layers, or all three layers, the paper and the two fabric layers. So here are my two layers, and then now I'm going to take my pattern piece off and then just cut this again, so then I end up with four fabric layers. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and actually stitch my straps first. So again, um, my back of the fabric or the wrong side is on the inside, so I'm going to flip these so right sides are together facing the inside. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and pin one short side perpendicular to the seam and pin the corners going through both layers. I'm gonna pin both long sides. So I'm gonna leave one short side open so that we can stitch around it, hide the seam allowance and then flip it out. I'm going to go to the sewing machine and then this will get stitched here. So we'll back tack, stitch, turn the corner, stitch, turn the corner, stitch, and then back tack here um, to give this a nice clean finish. Okay, so um, I have my machine threaded. I'm on stitch length. Two, my pattern selector is on straight stitch. My attention is on four. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and, so my half inch seam allowance line is in between three eighths and five eighths. If I look at the little clear plate and at the needle plate, 
So I'm going to sti stitch at half inch seam allowance. I'm going to take a few stitches. I'm going to take about two or three stitches. I'm going to reverse stitch. So I'm back tacking, holding it all the way down. I'm going to stitch, making sure I pull my pins out before I get to the Now, I do want to turn a corner here. So I'm going to get here to about the edge of the presser foot. I'm going to raise my presser foot and I'm going to pivot, pull that pin out, and I'm making sure I leave my needle in so I turn a nice sharp corner. And I'm going to stitch across at half inch. Again, when I get to about the edge of the presser foot, that's about half inch. I'm going to leave my needle in, raise just my presser foot. I'm going to pivot lower my presser foot and then stitch. Okay, when I get to the end here, I'm going to go ahead and back tack a couple stitches just to secure the edge. So I'm going to leave a pretty long thread tail and snip, or I can use the thread cutter on the machine. Okay, and I'm going to just snip my thread tails. Now, it's a little hard to see my stitch. You can see it better on the back because I tried to stitch in gray. But what I'm going to do is clip my corner. So I'm going to trim this seam allowance. It's at a half inch right now. So I'm going to try to trim this down to half its width. So down to a quarter of an inch, just on the three sides that I stitched. So not on the open edge here that I didn't stitch. So I'm just cutting down the middle of that seam allowance. And that's just so this won't be so bulky when we turn it out. Do not cut too close to the stitch because the loose weave of the fabric will fray and then this will get a hole in it. Okay, now on the corners, I'm gonna put my finger on the corner where I stitched and just clip right next to my finger. So I'm gonna cover up that stitch and clip right next to my finger. Next thing I'm gonna do is go in and just try to turn this out. Now you can use what's called a loop turner and I'll weave one in here in the lab um, and I'll show you how to turn it out with the loop turner. Okay, so with the loop turner, it looks like this. What you're gonna do is on that open end of the fabric, it has a little hook on it. You're gonna go in and hook the fabric on the other end. So literally hook it inside of the fabric and then I'm gonna slide it past the rest of the fabric. And sometimes it's just a little hard to get started. And this fabric, the thicker the fabric, the harder it is. If you have a slippery fabric, this is really easy. So I'm just gonna pull it through that open end here. I can take the hook out now. Okay, so it's turned on the right side. So now I'm gonna take, this is called a crease turner and I'm gonna stick that in there. Try not to use your scissors, but if you don't have anything else, just be careful because you could poke a hole even with this if you um, poke at it too much. And you just want to kind of sharp corner there and make sure all the fabric is turned out in the corner. Okay, so a pretty sharp corner, make sure they look even. Okay, so now I'm going to take this to the iron and press it. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch the other one so I'll have it done and then we'll take these to press it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and press this. So I do have water and iron. Um, I'm gonna put it on this steam setting. Just give it a minute to get hot. And to test the iron, we iron the board and then touch to make sure it's hot. So I'm gonna just give it a second. And I just wanna make sure I press it nice and flat. And really press on it. Okay, to make sure I get it nice and flat. 
Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do both straps the same way. Okay, so now it's time to put the body of the cape together. So I have my lining, I have my shell, and I have my two straps. And I'm going to look for the little notches that I cut. So one is here, one is here. So I'm going to go ahead and pin my strap, placing it in between those two notches there. And then I'll just kind of add the lining to this so this gets caught. Make sure that the strap is facing the inside of the garment. Okay, so when it gets sewn, it flips out that way. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Now what I'm pinning to the side that's gonna get caught in the seam allowance is the open edge. So make sure the finished edge is not the pinned edge. Okay, so I'm gonna place this one here. And then I'm going to add my lining to it. So I'm just going to double check and I want to make sure. So this is my wrong side. So I want to make sure my two front sides are facing each other. So this is the front side of the fabric, front side of the fabric. So they're going to be sandwiched together. And I want this to be back of fabric, back of fabric. Okay. So I'm going to start pinning this. And I'm matching up my notch here on both pieces and my notch here on both pieces. And then I'm just gonna kind of pin everything else together, perpendicular to the seam. Now here where I have my strap, I'm gonna take that pin, making sure I keep the strap in the same place and just make sure I go through all three layers without moving the strap. So I'm just kind of adding the lining to that pin. Now, if you are uh, using a lighter lining than your shell, if you're using the same fabric for both, that's fine. Um, sometimes one will stretch out. So you can see my lining kind of stretched out a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of pin it as best I can here. And that's why it's important to have a notch because I can see that my line is stretched out a little bit on this curve. And so I got a little bit of extra there and that's fine because it'll get caught in my seam allowance because I'm stitching it half inch. So I'm gonna just keep pinning around. Okay, so now that I have everything pinned, what I'm gonna do is just try to figure out which end I wanna leave open. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave this end right here open. So this will be the end that I don't stitch. Um, so I'm actually going to start stitching and I'm going to make sure if I have a lighter weight fabric and a heavier weight fabric that I stitch with the heavier weight fabric facing me. Um, so I don't pick up any slack. So I'm going to start stitching here and at my half inch, I'm going to back tack, stitch my half inch around the curves, stitch, turn the corner, stitch, turn the corner, stitch, and then back tack here. So what I'll have here is just a little opening um, and I should be able to turn this small one out. Now, if I were, I'm actually gonna switch that because if you're doing the bigger one, this would not be enough of an opening. So we're gonna close this. And what I'm gonna do is leave a little opening at the bottom. So what you wanna do, uh, and this should work also if you're doing a large cape, is I'm gonna put four fingers with here and leave a four fingers with opening. So that means I'm gonna start here and kind of finish here. Okay, so that's about four fingers there. Okay, so actually what I'm gonna do is back tack here to start stitching, stitch all the way around, turn the corner, stitch, turn the corner, stitch, turn the corner, stitch, turn the corner, stitch, and then back tack here. So what I'll have is a little kind of like a pocket opening so that I can flip the whole thing out. And that should work because this opening should be big enough for the larger one. This would only be small enough if I pulled it through here for the small cape. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here now, okay, 
is start at that first pin here, making sure I line my curve up at half inch. I'm gonna put my presser foot down, take my pin out, put my needle in and make sure I'm at half inch here. And I'm gonna take a couple stitches back at, go around the curves, making sure that my seam lot stays at half inch and I'm being consistent. Pulling out my pins before I get to them. Now it's gonna get a little thick here where my um, strap is. So I'm gonna just pull a pin out and make sure I hold it in place so it doesn't move. And I'm gonna stitch across it. Now, if you wanna make sure it sticks in that seam, you can back tack over it and just make sure it's not sloppy. Keep stitching. Try not to pull your pin out too soon. So I'm starting to pick up a little bit of slack here. So like extra fabric. Um, and that's because I'm pulling my pins out just a little bit too soon. I try to make sure what you're about to stitch is flat so you don't end up with any pleats. So again, I'm gonna turn a corner here. So when I get almost to the edge of the presser foot, I'm gonna leave my needle in, lift my presser foot turn the corner, stitch across the top, leave the needle in, lift the presser foot, turn the corner, and then keep stitching at my half inch. stitching right on the edge, it should be fine. Okay, so again, I'm at the corner. I'm gonna leave the needle in, raise the presser foot, pivot my fabric, lower the presser foot, stitch across. Leave the needle in, raise my presser foot, turn the corner, lower my presser foot and then stitch the rest. So I'm back to my strap again. So I want to make sure I hold it down so it doesn't move. And I don't have to back tack over it. I'm just going to do it because my denim is really thick in there. Stitching around the curve. Okay, I'm almost to that last pin. So when I get to that last pin, I'm going to back tack and come out. So I'm going to go ahead and clip my thread tails. Okay, and I have a little pocket opening here. So what I'm going to do now is go in and turn that pocket opening, just kind of be careful and turn all the fabric to the right side. Now I do want to clip, I actually am going to clip my, because I had to stitch these. Um, so just like we did, you can see it better on the lining side. So just like we did your straps, I'm going to trim this down to a quarter of an inch and I'm kind of going to trim just the side here and then clip that corner and clip that corner and i'm going to do the same thing on the other side just to make sure it doesn't look too bulky if you forget to do this or don't do this it's okay but when you turn it and try to press it you'll kind of notice a difference i could also go in here and on the curve i'm just going to trim the curve part at the neck down to half its width. So a quarter of an inch is just trimming off just half of the seam up. Don't cut too close to the seam. Make sure nothing else is getting in the way when you cut or you'll put a hole in your fabric. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this out. If you wanna trim all the way around it, you can, uh, especially if you're doing two layers of denim, it may just be a little too bulky. 
So I'm just gonna carefully pull this through here because that opening can rip even though we backtracked it if you put too much pressure on it. And I'm just turning it out. Okay, so there are my two straps clawed in here nice and neat. Okay, in between my two layers. And I just wanna make sure I turn everything out to the seam now here at the top, I want to go in and take my crease turner and go in that opening. And carefully try to turn out my strap portion. And you just wanna make sure this doesn't rip. Um, if you have, this is gonna sound strange, but rounded chopsticks also do the trick if you don't have a crease turner. I just don't suggest using your scissors because almost always it will kind of pull through. So I'm just trying to get that corner nice and crisp there. So that's one side. And I'm gonna come over here on the other side. And just turn that out. Okay, so um, everything is turned out. What I need to do now, and those are my straps, is just go to the iron and press this and then i'm going to show you just how to close that and then put on either velcro or a snap so that is just a very basic cake um, and i'll leave this in the room for the sample okay so the pressing is very important um, and again i want to make sure that all my seam allowance uh, my seams on the side are right up against the edge of the fabric so it doesn't look puffy and I'm gonna go ahead and just press it, making sure I press hard and that the iron's hot. And I'm gonna go ahead and press around the top. Now for this opening, um, I know that this was half inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna try to kind of fold that in on itself to shape it. And then we're gonna go press it. Okay, so, and my straps are still a little thicker than I'd like for them to be, but. Just really press on it. So now I'm just gonna quickly press on my lining side. I don't wanna put too much heat on my lining. Okay, so you can see how nice and flat that looks. Okay. And then next, I'm gonna go ahead and pin the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pin the bottom of this. Again, I did kind of press it so I know where the edge of the fold is. I just wanna make sure that these two edges kind of kiss, but that my lining doesn't hang out if I do it like this so that I don't see it from the top edge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin, just kind of going in and out right here on the edge. Okay, 
Okay, so it looks like this. And my line is kind of showing here, so I'm gonna fix this. Okay, so it should end up looking like this. And this is gonna be a little bit difficult because we'll have to stitch right on the edge. If you don't want this to show, this stitch to show, you can do a whip stitch, which I do have a tutorial on my YouTube on how to do a whip stitch by hand. Um, because this is not that big, it would take you maybe about five minutes or so to finish that. Um, but to just get this done so it's durable, I'm gonna go ahead and Stitch right here on the edge. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm still on a number two stitch. So where my opening starts, which is right here, I'm gonna just put my needle down and I'm gonna try to catch it and I'm gonna be maybe an eighth of an inch on the edge. I just wanna show this lined up here. Um, so I'm going to try to get it right on the edge of the fabric to catch the fold. But I know that I have my lining under there and I'm trying to catch two layers. So I do want to make sure that I'm not too close to the edge. So I'm going to take a couple stitches in the back tack. I'm going to take that pin out. If you have matching thread, um, the top stitch really won't look bad um, as long as you don't have a contrast and color thread. So then when I get to the other side of the opening, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of back tack here. And I'm just going to neatly clip my threads. And I just want to look and make sure that I caught that there's no openings in the fabric, which they're not. And I just want to make sure I caught this. Okay, so then next step, I'm going to go ahead and press that. A little bit of slack on the fabric there. Then I'm going to go ahead and press this. And then we can put the closures on. So now I'm just going to press what I just uh, stitched at the bottom, the closure. So the sewing is complete. We're just going to put closure um, at the top and on the straps. Okay, so for the Velcro, I'm going to put the Velcro on this part. Um, <clears throat> and this will kind of overlap this way. I just purchased Velcro from Dollar Tree, so $1.25. Um, and I'm just going to put the fuzzy with the crystal. And because I'm not doing a sew on, you can do a sew on where you just put it on and then you just stitch on the top of it, you just stitch a square. But I'm just going to, for these purposes, do the soft adhesive. So I'm going to stick this one here. And then um, <clears throat> you can put one or two of the bottom on there. Um, I'm just going to kind of put it here and press it and then just leave it so it'll sit on the fabric. And as long as you don't pull it too hard, um, once it sits for a little bit, um, then this should stay on. It should be fine. Okay. And then here, I just want to show you how to put on a snap with a hammer. You can do a sew on snap. I'm not going to do a demonstration on that. Um, but I'm going to show you how to put this snap on with the hammer and the tool. Okay, before I show you the snap, I just wanted to show you 
um, some different hardware that could be used also. So this is clearly too wide, but there's belt hardware, um, there's D-rings, uh, there's parachute buckle closures. Um, there's a bunch of different things that you can use for this. Just the Velcro is the easiest. And because um, you're, we're kind of estimating to a degree the size of the waist of the dog, um, something adjustable is usually easier to do. Or if you make a longer tie um, or use the bias tape, you can make it longer so then you can just tie it under the dog. Okay, so I wanna just show you what options you have here. Um, so the sew on snaps look like this. I do have a bigger version of it. Um, I have smaller ones, they come in different sizes. I have clear ones, which are usually used on the inside of the garment. Um, so that is something that we could put here and you just kind of sew it on. So the top and bottom are already put together. Um, so I would sew pretty much this on one side and this on the other side, and then they go together. Okay, so those are the sew-on snaps. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to go ahead and put the, you can use Velcro here. Just remember when this closes, they need to overlap also. So you put one on the right side, one on the long side, the front and back fabric. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna just go ahead and mark where I want my, I'm just gonna kind of put it on the edge, my placement, so that they are kind of right on top of each other and in the middle here. And I know this is gonna go on, so this snap actually kind of goes on like this. So this one will go with the prong face up. And this one will go with the prong face down. Okay, so they get put together like this. You have to sew these separate, otherwise you'll end up sewing it closed. Um, so I've already marked on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my hand sewing needle. And for this, I'm gonna sew with both threads. So I wanna thread the eye of the needle first. Okay. And I'm gonna make sure my two thread ends are even. And I'm gonna go ahead and just tie a knot there. I do have a video on how to tie this knot. However, you can get a knot in there as well. <clears throat> and then, so for this one, uh, what I'm going to do is just go Okay, so I'm going to hold this in place. I'm going through just a top layer of fabric and going through the hole here. And I'm gonna go through each time, three to five times. So that's two, three. This is a bigger snap. So I probably wanna do five, but. And then I'm gonna take my needle and kind of go under the snap, pick up a little bit of fabric and then start going through the next hole. and then go through fabric. I'm just going through the top layer. Going through anywhere between three to five times. Okay, again, I'm gonna take my needle and go under the fabric and go through the hole. Go pick up some fabric and go through the hole. I'm gonna do it one last time for this hole. Go under the snap, pick up fabric on the top layer, 
and go through the hole three times. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a knot in here. So I'm going to start forming another stitch. And before I pull it tight, I'm going to take my needle and slip it through the loop. And so that made one knot and I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to just pick up a little bit of fabric as if I were taking another stitch and then take my needle and slip it through that loop that it's forming. So I'm going to clip it. Okay, I'm going to re-thread my needle so now I can do the other side. Okay, so for this other side, this prong part is going to go on the bottom of here. So this is the back of the snap. So I'm going to stitch it down this way. And I already have my pencil marking, so I know what it should be. So again, I'm going to just pick up the lining layer so my stitch doesn't show on the other side. I'm going to pull it through till my knot stops it making sure I don't have any slack on the thread. And I'm gonna go through three to five times through this first hole. Okay, slip my needle under, go through three to five times here. And then three to five times here. And just be careful, make sure that your threads are going together. Okay, and then I'm gonna go through three to five times here. So now I'm going to go through and put my knot in. So as if I've taken another stitch, I'm going under my threads. And as I start to pull a loop, I'm going to slip my needle through the loop. And I'm going to do that one more time in the same spot. And slip my needle through the loop. OK, I'm going to clip my threads. And then just check it for placement. Okay, and that snaps together. Okay, so what I'm gonna just do is just kind of show you how this should be put on the dog. Um, just remember that you will be um, taking a picture of this on a dog. So the neck portion Okay, so the next portion will go around here. This might be too small for him. And I'm gonna snap it. Okay, and then just make sure your garment is nice and clean um, with no extra thread tail. Actually, this is a good fit for the small dog. Okay, um, so then there's my cape. I'll probably, this is just the, the sample for um, the construction on how to sew. Um, so I may actually just add something to this if we use this one um, for the event, but um, I could still go and bedazzle it or whatever. Um, but basically this is what the fit should look like. Um, the closures are nice and tight. This I can kind of adjust a little bit. Again, like I said, if you think you are not sure about the waist measurement, I could put another piece of the bottom Velcro over here to make it tighter. Um, but the neck really will keep that on there. It doesn't need to be too tight around the waist. Okay, and that's the completion of the cape.